G'day viewers, this is Troy from the Troy's Visual Arts Channel. I am doing a little video doco on my TV camera tube collection. Yes, I collect TV camera tubes as well as vintage TV cameras. In my collection I've got a wide variety of TV camera tubes ranging from Viticon to Image Orphicon to, would you believe, Iconoscope. Yes. I'm probably one of very few Australians who own a an Iconoscope TV camera tube. Anyways, I thought I'd do this video doco on a Viticon tube TV camera, just for the fun of it. So I'm using a 1974 Sony AVC 3250C black and white 230 inch Viticon tube camera. Anyways. Here's my TV camera tube collection. Well, sample of it anyways, because I've got more than one of each type of tube. Starting off with a 230 inch Viticon tube. These were used in your general purpose Viticon tube cameras of the 1970s. Here is my and um, the earlier tubes were one inch Viticon tubes. They, these tubes were actually used in um, broadcast cameras for low budget stations who couldn't afford image Orphicon tube black and white cameras or couldn't budget for them at least. These were also used in in your general purpose Viticon tube cameras and even security cameras. Next up, um, we have a broadcast grade three inch image Orphicon tube. Just got to take the cover off. Well, I'll show you into the cover anyhow. Um, yep, in its cover, um, our RCA 5820 image Orphicon tube. Yeah, these are pretty big they are. These type of tubes were manufactured from the late 1940s right up into the 1970s. And um, were used on pretty much any black, well, pretty much a lot of the black and white image Orphicon tube studio cameras from, from that period, from the 1940s to the 1960s. These are quite nice looking tubes and were very state of the art for the day. I have about um, three of these in my collection. Well, I've actually got four, but um, I've given one to a mate on indefinite loan for as a display piece. This tube would have been manufactured around the late 1960s, so as one of the later editions, due to the fact that it's um, got a stamp logo, which of course indicates the later manufactured RCA tubes. Yeah, these tubes are a very interesting type of tube. Um, because they have this haloing effect when um, when the camera is pointed to bright objects, as you'll see in um, vintage black and white television shows. You'll see when they point them, point these cameras to spotlights, you'll see a big dark halo halo around them. These tubes also came in the four and a half inch variety as well, which offered uh, much better quality, sharper images. And yes, I do have one of those tubes as well, except it's in my 1950s Marconi Mark III studio camera. So I cannot really show it on camera right now. But yeah, these are really cool tubes. And I intend on um, building a working camera out of this tube someday. Well, it's a project in the pipeline at the moment. And um, 
yeah I'm getting all I'm still gathering up data and everything but hopefully I'll get the project into gear sometime in the near future next we have a extremely rare piece of technology this is a much rarer version of the image Orphicon tube this is a 1960s Hitachi HS 124A 2 inch image Orphicon tube I very much doubt these were used in studio cameras they were more they were sort of used for more so for specialised applications like I guess NASA space photography or perhaps for used as a medical camera or something along those lines anyways general industrial purposes but yeah these apparently offered much better quality images than the 3 inch image Orphicon tubes according to some sources or some obscure sources I found on the internet there is not there's pretty much not much information on these tubes available on the internet and I really really would love to find out more about them and what exactly they were used for but anyhow well, I was lucky enough to get these um, they went on eBay over in America sometime last year and I of course um, snatched them because yeah nobody else bid it on them <laughs> yeah I actually initially thought they were 3 inch but very surprised to find that they were 2 inch anyhow that's my I've got two of these tubes anyhow I hope to one day build a camera out of these as well we'll see how I go with me 3 inch version first alright next up is the granddaddy of my collection and here it is this is an early to mid 1940s um, iconoscope tube yes this um, is the smaller version of the 1850 iconoscopes that were used in broadcast cameras from the late 1930s to the late 1940s this version is the 1846 iconoscope tube this um, version was used exclusively for military purposes in in um, bomb ca bomber cameras, bomber guided, um, camera guided, um, using camera guided aircrafts which had bombs on them. And um, yeah, they there's yeah they were field tested back then and yeah worked effectively but weren't exactly put into actual operation as far as I know but yeah I've, uh, I've actually seen some kinescope footage of these cameras in action and yeah they gave quite nice images and um, yeah work and serve their purpose quite well for the applications used and I've actually seen um, seen some you know bomber um, aerial bomber footage um, from these type of cameras and I've also seen some some um, yeah um, boat bomber camera footage which these were housed on a small remote controlled boat with with a bomb on board and this camera on board and yeah watch and watching the kinescope footage you see the the boat goes straight towards its target and then boom camera camera explodes along with the bomb and that's it <laughs> these were the cameras were disposable cameras in that sense but anyhow um, these tubes um, were also used for other applications too um, amateur TV stations of the early 50s and perhaps late 40s used these tubes in um, smaller cameras and um, would you believe yes yeah, somebody in Japan has recently built a working solid-state camera 
using this this exactly this sort of tube and um, modern solid state electronics and, um, and the images that come from these tubes are absolutely magnificent they look even more superior to that of a Viticon tube it's quite an amazing piece of technology for the 1940s anyhow I of course am endeavouring to one day build a camera out of this tube I'm actually now kind of debating would it be easier to build a, an iconoscope camera from scratch opposed to an image orphicon camera seeing that the um, setup of the iconoscope camera is actually apparently a little bit simpler and, and even coil construction is apparently a bit simpler than that for an image orphicon tube Anyhow, um, yeah, this is an amazing piece of technology. And it's just amazing to see from that video of that iconos solid state iconoscope tube that these camera tubes gave such high fidelity images. So, yeah, this is my prized possession out of my entire collection of camera tubes. And this tube is actually in very good condition there is no signs of leakage as there's no milky whiteness anywhere on the tube so I believe this um, camera tube may be a actual goer and will probably give some very nice images when made into a camera anyhow anyhow I hope you guys in and girls enjoyed this video on my TV tube, camera tube collection. This is Troy from the Troy's Visual Arts Channel signing out. See you all. Oh, there was just one thing I forgot to show you is before I finish my video, and that's my homemade Viticon tube camera, which I promised I'd show earlier on in the video. Here it is. Yeah, I built this baby from scratch. Um, yeah, it took a few months of work on and off, um, putting it all together, gathering up the parts, ordering the parts from all over the world, from various sites, getting up um, the necessary technical knowledge and technical advice from from some good friends of mine. Um, yeah, took all that and course a bit of trial and error when testing it out and yeah I um, ran into some problems along the way I put some components in the wrong way and some components went faulty you know got burnt out of, some tr transistors got burnt out as a result of it and yeah <laughs> had one one lingering issue which was a vertical scan issue which took me a while to real to find out it was the one of the output stage transistors that was causing the causing the sawtooth wave to look to look you know more curved than a sawtooth wave and which was resulting in a um, squ vertically squashed picture anyways after ironing out all those bugs this this camera makes quite decent images for what it's made of and the simplicity of the design 
and yeah, I've um, a while ago put on a bunch of um, put a bun bunch of videos of the, from this camera onto YouTube, which you know just check out my YouTube channel. You'll find them somewhere somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah, I have to say I am proud of my creation. Well, I made it from a schematic made by some guy who who put in into a amateur TV handbook which I downloaded in PDF off off um, the BATC website. But yeah, I made this camera to prove to myself that I can build a working camera from scratch. It's a lead up project to my image off tube camera that I intend on making. Well, I've been intending for quite a while, but yeah, things get in the way. Motivation can be an issue for me. Also, um, yeah, just getting all the technical data. I'm currently still getting technical data on building the yoke for it. But I've got most of it. Just need to get some minor details fixed up and I'm ready to construct one. And of course, yeah, I'm still deciding which type of camera I want to base this um, design off or should I say copy off there's one particular solid state three inch image off con tube camera that which I intend on um, building from which would be a visual mark 10 camera which was made in in the early 60s in the in the United States which is a totally solid state three inch image off con tube camera anyhow the, that project's been in the pipeline for about a year and a half but I have made some starts on it I've got I've racked up a lot of technical info I've gotten some bits and pieces for the yoke assembly so yeah I'm in a better position to get started on it which I will soon Anyway, just give you one last look at the camera before I sign out. Anyways, this is Troy from the Troy's Visual Arts Channel, signing out. See you all.